We're about to show you how to have the perfect, and I mean perfect, Alaska cruise we've been researching for years. If you're like us, you probably scoured the internet, the vlogs, and nothing was all inclusive that had everything in one vlog or series. Well, we're doing it here. I'm Marie with LBB TV, where it's never a dull moment on our channel, sometimes in the most magical places, in this case, the most adventurous places. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because this is gonna be a wild vlog series. We enlisted the help of our travel agency, Magical Vacation Planner, to help us get the perfect trip. Everything from booking excursions, figuring out what to do, not to do, as well as what's the perfect rooms, what works for the best family size, and more. Plus, amazing hidden gems in Alaska that nobody ever talks about on vlogs. We got it here. Wait till you see inside the ship. We're gonna do a full review of the ship and the rooms. But wait till you see all the ship on a helicopter in a glacier, kayaking with whales, and also the towns, and much more things to do that you may want to try, and things you may want to try for those who are adventurous, and things you may not want to try for those who want a little bit more something simple. All right, behind me is the Norwegian Encore. We are told that is the cruise ship to be on for Alaska. And again, this is gonna be a brutally honest review. The good, the bad, the awesome, and I can't wait to take you guys on it. Let's go. And I have to say, Norwegian Cruise Line has made things super easy, where literally you just walk right in. Right now we're being escorted. So fancy with the Haven. Oh my goodness. This fancy. Welcome home. Thank you. How are you? Oh, fancy. Oh my God, this is amazing. This is incredible. Holy moly. Oh my goodness. Everything. Oh my gosh. I think this is the best room on the ship. It is the Haven's Deluxe Owner Suite with large balcony. It's almost a thousand square feet with almost 500 square feet of balcony. But look at, I mean, oh my goodness. Everything, incredible. We could have a party here. Guys, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. This is incredible. This is, this is bigger than our house. This is amazing. Wow. Oh my goodness. Again, how incredible all of it. My mind is blown and just wait till you see the wraparound balcony. <gasps> all right, before we see the room or anything, how incredible is this? It wraps around the whole way. Wow, magical vacation planner, the travel agency MVP for the win. Holy moly, click blank in the bio. Now on YouTube, there are not reviews of this room or really good views of this room in general. As you can see, this is a nice sized dining room table and it also extends if you want. They can add extra panels, extra chairs. And of course, with all the seating here, easily this can fit a family, a large family. But speaking of big families, two can sleep on this sofa bed here. It's actually really comfortable. And there's blackout curtains here because as you know, if you're going on an Alaska cruise or depending wherever this goes, it is going to need to be dark. These black out. Of course, the big screen TV is awesome. It can play music. There's a giant Bose system as well. But wait till you see all the dining options. Not only do they give you a ton of extra space to put things uh, from food to other items, but even the wall here, yes, more and more storage space along this whole way. It also comes with complimentary alcohol and food, and they got us the best of the best. Oh my goodness. Very, very expensive, fancy alcohol and drinks, and unlimited espresso with an espresso machine, tea, and more. Right now, we have our family and friends outside, and with the doors closed, it's even soundproof. And now let's go to the bedroom, which I think is the selling point here. <gasps> Check this out. This view. Now imagine going to Alaska in a king bed with this incredible view. So imagine sleeping and waking up to this, whether it be Alaska or wherever the Norwegian Encore cruise ship goes. And it's not just this balcony. There's, of course, an access to the main front balcony that wraps around. The bathroom is amazing. It's like the size of my house. But first, check out this closet. How amazing is all of this? Again, all the space. Literally, you could fill. Uh, if you wanted to live on this boat, you could. I mean, check out even like shoe racks over here. Again, if you want to put your luggage, there's more space here with hangers. And again, just everywhere, space, space. And here in the bathroom, not only do you get this amazing vanity area with, again, a hair dryer, 
as well as there's more space. Just keeps going and going. Dual sinks and of course, I love this brand. It's so fancy, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know it's good. And then when it comes to even like the bathroom, again, you would think on a cruise ship, tiny toilet. No. It's a Toto toilet and it's very big. And look how big the bathtub is. If you're wondering how much space, yes. Technically, if one guest felt like it, they could go to sleep in here. So you want the ultimate relaxation soaking without a spa? Literally right there. Glaciers or beautiful views of whatever might be going on in a Norwegian cruise. And again, that shower right there, same view. And I'm gonna show you the second bedroom, which is actually bigger than a standard room in Norwegian Cruise Line. That's right, how big is this? Now, not only can this be a sofa bed if you want, of course, there's a lovely TV, tons, again, of extra space, everything opens. Again, so much storage for family, again. And that is a Murphy bed. You just have to ask them to open it. And again, look at all the space you get here, the sides, the sides. And then come this way. Again, look how amazing. This is goals, ladies, you know. And guys, this will blow your mind. There is a third bathroom on here. That's right. This room has its own private bathroom. So again, say you have family. It is very, very personal. You can do your own thing. Again, your own whole space, very separate from the main bedroom and the living room. And then there is even a main guest bathroom. How amazing is all of this? What a beautiful sink. And again, very private. It's very far away from the main living room space. Oh, I love this. Look at, look at Chris. King of the world. Chris, are you loving life? Yes, I am. <laughs> and as amazing as this all is, this was a labor of love, years and years in the making to get here. For those of you who don't know me, um, I've had over 20 surgeries. Um, I have something called spina bifida. It basically makes everything waist down not work correctly. But we never thought I could do a cruise ever. Um, and I can't thank enough um, my husband and my friends, uh, Magical Vacation Planner, everybody, because it really is a labor of love to even get me on this ship with all the equipment, the health stuff I need, all, again, looking at me, you would never guess. Um, so I'll be honest too, I'm, I was really scared to go on a cruise. Um, it's my first actual trip outside the Disney world bubble in seven years. So, um, so this is a really big deal and, uh, I never thought I would get to do this. And so, It is a big Chris. Okay, sorry guys for the tears. I, <laughs> um, but yeah, I I never even thought I could travel on a plane at some points. It had been years before I could even get on a plane. We'd had to drive everywhere. Um, so to be on a boat, <laughs> you know, it's seven years in the making. But um, but yeah, uh really worth it. Let me know in the comments too if you're like me where you think travel isn't an option. Um, part of the reason I love the Disney bubble is because I have the world at my fingertips in Disney World just by literally walking around the world at Epcot and uh, travel for me is hard. So to get here today was a lot. We're talking cases of luggage, cases of everything. Um, special foods, dietary needs, you name it. The amount of work that my husband, me, producer hash on everybody had to put in so I could be here today and uh, thank you magical vacation planner for all your help too um, they're great with anybody that might have disabilities sorry for the tears but this is just I never thought I would ever get to, to travel again like this before I had um, some of my major surgeries seven years ago I was able to travel <laughs> in a million years if you told me the girl in a hospital bed for like a year would get to have this view and travel I would never ever guess so just never give up hope that things will get better or that options will happen because I guess they do and it just takes time so for our first cruise we chose to do the Haven on Norwegian Cruise Line and you can get it actually for an affordable price if you book in advance at an off-peak seasons so I'm going to show you it is amazing 
So you have your own private concierge, your own lounge, as well as unlimited bar. Oh my goodness. What? What is the what is that? Is that like a mixology thing? Oh my goodness. Alright, Chris, cheers. That's good. So Chris got a Glen Morangy whiskey, which is a very expensive whiskey, and that was free? That wasn't like an extra charge? Nope, it's part of the What? That's so good. That's crazy. So this is what is in the bar menu. Look at these. Again, this is all um again free with your package. And this is the pool and sun deck. Oh my goodness. You're like in your own private oasis here? This is crazy. Oh my goodness. You guys are gonna have to start tallying how many times I say that on this vlog. And you know we're all about food here. Check out the prosciutto and Greer croissant dough. Oh my gosh, salmon chive crepe. A cake red velvet pop. Giant cookies. Wow, that really is giant. It's the size of my head. Dolce de leche. Donuts with jam. Build your own trail mix. Ooh, I call this fancy salad water. In our other ch in our other vlogs, you may have seen me whenever they add cucumber, I go, oh, fancy salad water. Oh, but now they have the Annie orange, blueberry, blackberry infused water. Now, of course, my main thing was I said, where is the coffee? So you can get decaf and more over here. One of the perks of the Haven rooms is also your own dining. That's right. I was a little tired and I thought, you know what? Let's get Haven dining brought to our room that is an option, which is crazy to me. That is so amazing. We're actually having a butternut squash soup, lobster deviled eggs, crab louie, roasted pork belly. Oh my goodness. And they even brought the water and the pitchers. What a way to enjoy a meal, sit out here with the best view in the house. I am so excited. And look at that sunset. Absolutely beautiful. So Chris, what do you think of the trip so far? This is like a 10 out of 10. <laughs> 20 out of 10. We haven't even left the room. We haven't, we haven't left we the room We actually yet. decided not to leave the room because the room is so nice. Chris, Chris we see, look, look, we see the mountains. The Dude, mountains. Chris, we can see the mountains outside our, our bedroom. How crazy is that to say that? That's unbelievable. Oh yeah, speaking of this shirt, if you love Arendale, get 2013 when the movie came out, you can get it at shoplbv.com and it's on sale, right Chris? It's on sale. So we are just waking up out of bed and now we are in Alaska. What a crazy view. Chris is listening to Country Rose Take Me Home. I belong. Oh, there's one out there. Look. Oh my God, a whale. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> Not an orca. An orca would have a big fin. Oh, that's, Chris, that's a whale. That is a whale. That's a whale. That's not a porpoise. Oh my God, that's a, yeah, whale. that's a whale. Oh my God. How amazing is this? It is our first day actually going into Alaska in Juneau, and we are going to get to kayak with whales. And we're going to see the Mendenhall Glacier. Again, all of these excursions, there's so many to pick from. We used Magical Vacation Planner to help us figure out what was the best one. Our top priority was we want to see whales. Now, obviously it's not a guarantee, but we've already seen a bunch of whales already just going through the water here. I am so excited. Another thing we want to see is glaciers. So again, you can prioritize your excursions by looking at what's available, what you like most. Some people like hiking. Some people like trying food. Some people want to see like more the Alaskan culture and the Native American culture. There's so many things that you can curtail for your own experience. But our number one thing, the whales and the glaciers animals so excited Chris are you excited to go hang out with whales and go kayaking and check out Juno yes I am oh my goodness the wilderness must be explored must be explored Maria you know this is the last frontier what how about Frontierland Disney it's a little, it's, you know we love Disney too. We love Alaska. We love, we love it all. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because we have adventures all over the world. Frontier land, the last frontier, you name it. There you can see the Norwegian bliss that's about to leave right um, in front of us. 
and they're on the same, I guess, Alaskan excursion just a day earlier. And look at what we did. We got food for the balcony here. Oh my goodness, what a way to eat. Holy moly, and speaking of amazing food, part of the Haven is incredible dining. We have seared scallops with a polenta cauliflower sauce and grilled wild Alaskan salmon, lobster bisque, and a mushroom brie flatbread with caramelized onions and a brie burger. How amazing. So another perk of the Haven is you actually get to disembark in your own separate elevator. So you don't have to wait in the lines and lines that sometimes can take a ton of time to just get off the boat to do the excursions. We're disembarking even in our own private area and now we are going on our excursion. Okay, so one of the reasons to embark first if you can is because the lines to get to the buses are so long and lots of people waiting. So you know what? Chris and I are walking. We're walking. We are walking to Juneau. So where you head to to meet for your excursions, or say you want to book an excursion last minute. See, there's a lot of them. They've been stopping us and talking to us. Looks like there's a lot of options, and sometimes it's cheaper than booking through the cruise. But by booking through a cruise, you are guaranteed nobody's going to leave you. Nobody's gonna leave you. Say the canoeing takes longer. You're okay. Don't worry. So that's the one good thing about booking through Norwegian is you know you're getting back on that, that boat. So here in front of the tram is where a lot of people meet to get their other tours that are booked outside of the actual cruise line. And here are some of Juno's top attractions that weren't even on the internet. So again, we're showing you stuff that will definitely help with planning your trip. They even mark it as where you can go and more. A really popular destination for food is actually Tracy's King Crab Shack that supposedly usually has a line. I guess everybody's on their excursions. So it definitely feels like we're in Frontierland and Disney World, Chris. I know, it's definitely a frontier town. How cool, so I think it's a very small city, that's for sure. All right, so we're here in front of the Mendenhall Glacier about to go sea kayaking. And look at the contraption and the boots they got on me. Oh my goodness. Here's everybody getting ready to go out and there is the glacier. And Chris is doing the heavy lifting right now. So we are in the Pacific Northwest Ocean. Yes, this is an ocean. And in front of us is the Mendenhall Glacier. How beautiful. Like as we're getting closer, I can see all the crevices in the glacier. And that's because you know the glacier's always moving, Chris? Yeah. How cool is that? And we unfortunately learned the sad fact that the Dungeness crab population as well as snow crab population is down 91% to the point they've almost stopped commercial fishing altogether. So if you can even find it, it's very rare. Wow, how amazing. Also, we were told that it's usually rainy and foggy in Juneau, but May is a great month for less rain, better weather. So as you can tell, we really lucked out right now. You usually can't even see the peaks of those mountains, we were told. So Chris, what did you think of this? This is fun. And it's not a lot of physical exertion coming not from the girl all. not it's paddling right now. But no, it, honestly, even if you are not athletic, you're fine. Um, we've had friends who are worried, oh, I'm not super athletic, what do I do? Oh, you're good. This is, this is amazing. And what a neat way to get close to the glacier and on a good budget. This wasn't an expensive trip. Um, again, if you book it outside the cruise, sometimes you can get it cheaper. Um, so I definitely recommend this if you're on a budget or something leisure and not too many hours. It's only gonna be three hours we're out, in and out from everything, including getting the gear on, the boat, all of the experience on the water. This was awesome. So that's the Mendenhall Glacier behind us. How amazing, we got really up close. They actually said it's really great to go at night for your excursion late afternoon because of the tide. Well, look, we got to see wildlife. Look, oh, oh my goodness. And he's performing. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my goodness. This is a $3 million whale. So we just had fun with the whale statue. It's the closest we're gonna get to a whale, I think. I mean, let's check out. Why are the only people here? It's like me and that guy. How crazy. Other things you can do in Juneau include just walking around the town, and seeing again these old time frontier. You know, when the gold mining happened, they have the original hotel, uh, first one here in Juneau from 1900s that you can go in. 
and more. Here's the Alaskan Hotel, it says built in 1913. I'm pretty sure that's the original sign right there. We're in front of the Red Dog Saloon, which is one of the oldest bars um, in America. And it's still standing. Looks crazy. So it's a fun old timey bar. Imagine if Disney World was like, yeah, let's get real into this. That's a different version of our moose from the Country Bears. Think Country Bear Jamboree, but four drinks in. And now we're in Skagway with the most incredible view. But this view is special because Norwegian Cruise Line docks particularly here and there's no other places for cruise ships to dock. So they have the best view, I think, of all of the mountains and the beautiful scenery. We're seeing eagles, sea otters, and more. So if you're more of the leisure type, you may want to even check out where your cruise ship docks because again, depending on the day, you just may want to hang out on the balcony like I do right now. But we're not because we're gonna go on a helicopter tour with dog sledding. How exciting. The only thing that could possibly even get close to rivaling that is this view. Now we're entering the town of Skagway. It looks like something out of a movie and I'm pretty sure it's just a tiny little main street. Definitely a gold mining town. The other major thing to do in Skagway is the White Pass Yukon route where you go on a six hour train ride through the Yukon. Now, a lot of people say it's really neat, um, but again, we wanted to see more of the glacier and things of that sort. So again, depending on what you are excited to do, there's different choices, but another one is the train. What Skagway is famous for is the gold rush and mining. And Chris, look how great, this definitely does feel like frontier land for sure. It's 1899, that is actually the visitor center, Camp Skagway. Chris, is that made out of sticks? It is. And then see the red lights in the window? Again, LBV TV is a family channel, but you can deduce what that is and what it was. There's even a museum of the history of red lights and you know what. Yes, in Skagway, there is even a museum for the red light and what happens in those areas where a red light, an LBB TV, a favorite channel. So uh, yeah, Skagway is definitely giving you the, uh, the full on experience of what it would have been like back in the 1800s here in Alaska. I love how it really does feel how I imagined old Alaska would be like, whereas you know, again, like I said, a major city. So Chris said this is what they used to carve tunnels into the mountains. That's cool. That looks like something Shredder from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hat. All right, before we go on our helicopter tour to the glacier with the dog sledding, we're going in the Skagway Brewery. And it looks awesome, it looks like an old saloon. I'm excited. I heard it's delicious and amazing craft beers. This may be a town of only a thousand people, but it's definitely the place to be. It is packed here. So I guess we came to the right spot. It even has beers to go and you can get growlers. We've never seen a growler, the giant jugs of beer. Uh, it's for those people who are in it to win it. All right, so Chris, what did you get to try? I got the Boomtown Brown. Boomtown Brown? It's <laughs> an interesting choice of name. Yep. Boomtown Brown. Boomtown Brown. You don't want that happening on your cruise. <laughs> now to get to the helicopter, we are walking to the actual helipad, right Chris? Going directly to a helicopter right now. Going straight to the helipad. Helipad, oh my goodness. This is your first time, Chris? First time with a helicopter. I think it's worth coming here early just because of the incredible views, right, Chris? Look at this. I mean, like a hike up. wow, how amazing. Get some photos. Just the helipad's amazing. Oh, here it comes. All right, we have all this stuff right here in gear, and it's going to be 20 degrees uh, colder. So I'm ready. I got glacier boots on, I got this on. I'm so excited. For those of you who don't know, I love doggies. It's a huge, like Disney and dogs. But yes, the big thing is the glacier. That's going to be really cool. Here we go. Time to go on the helicopter. Oh, we're taking off. We're taking off. Oh my gosh. Thank you. 
Right now they're getting the dogs ready to go dog sledding with us. I'm so excited and they're all barking because they all want to come on the run. Hi. Hi, Sam. He left the group. He left. Oh, Miracle, we're friends. I know, he knows. We're, we're good friends. We're good friends. Me and Miracle. They are so excited. Oh, my goodness. Oh, here we go. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh, you guys are so good. Great job, Miracle. Great job. Wow. Once we bank this time, it'll be quite and this is awesome. Oh my goodness. As you can see, there's Chris in the back and Andrew. Um, look at that backdrop. And now we're coming back into the camp. Oh, great job. Good boy. Good girls. Great job, doggies. Oh, how fun are they? Oh my goodness. And at the end, you're supposed to congratulate them. You did so good. You, did, you were amazing. And you were amazing. And you were amazing. Oh my goodness. They're eating the snow like as water, which makes sense. Oh my God, I love you doggies. I love you. What an amazing day in Alaska here in Skagway. I think Skagway, I think wins best of right now on our cruise with the dog sledding and the helicopter tour. It felt like we were in National Geographic and a part of some incredible nature tour. So we're coming to get takeout of King Crab Legs because we've never had them before at Moe's Frontier Bar. And look at this. Oh my goodness. So these are the king crab legs. We've never had them before. Holy moly. We've never had king crab legs. They are giant. Holy moly. That's like a monster. Wow. Look how it's like the size of Chris's arm. No joke. Chris is six foot five, guys, if you didn't know that. That is a big, wow. Chris. So the king crab is Chris size. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my goodness. Again, part of the bucket list of things to do in Alaska for that perfect vacation. Hold on, I got something on my teeth. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> okay, king crab legs, delicious. Um, they are though, I was explaining over pharma, so you can't find them easily, they're on menus a lot. And while we've never had them before, absolutely delicious. All right, so guys, we think somebody is water skiing. We're gonna zoom in. Oh my goodness, they are wakeboarding in the hypothermic water. What in the world? Well, that's impressive. Look at that. Well, if you're gonna wakeboard, what a way to do it. Good morning from Glacier Bay National Park. Hey guys, just left Skagway last night and we just arrived at the gates of Glacier Bay National Park. This is absolutely gorgeous and we're just hit the, the beginning of it. We're gonna see tons of glaciers uh, where the boat literally is in at sea day today, guys. So we're actually gonna be at sea for the entire day. We're not gonna be docking anywhere. We're not gonna be porting anywhere. However, we're gonna be seeing Glacier Bay National Park on the water for the entire day today, which is really neat. There's actually gonna even be a park ranger that comes on board. They're gonna take a boat and come on board and speak to all the guests here about Glacier Bay National Park, about the wildlife that you can see, the marine life you can see, all the glaciers and why it's a national park. Uh, so actually last night, as we were going to our cabin, they even gave us a national park map of Glacier Bay National Park. So we know what we're looking at, we know what we're seeing, we know what we're gonna be doing while we're here. And really we're just gonna be sitting on the boat the entire day today, looking at all the beautiful, beautiful views. We're here today at Glacier Bay, and this is the Marjorie Glacier. And even with some rain happening, it is absolutely beautiful. How incredible is that? You can see the bright neon blue cutting through the glacier and those colors. So beautiful, oh my goodness. And in the water are icebergs. Oh no. You know what happened that one time. Look how low the clouds are. It's like we're up in the heavens. How amazing is that? It's a little bit drizzling, it's not bad. Um, and we can still enjoy the deck and people are out. Wow, you can really see the blue now to the Marjorie Glacier. How beautiful. Oh my goodness, that doesn't look real. And we're so close, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary, guys. All right, so Chris is showing us where we're going 
in Glacier Bay, and this is really neat. So we just saw the Marjorie Glacier, Chris, so where was that? So that was right up here, right, right the on top. the border of Canada. That's literally Canada oh, right wow. here. Oh wow, yeah, park boundary, the boundary, Canada. The park boundary is the border of the United States and, and Canada. And then next we're going to the John Hopkins Glacier. So we're coming glacier. down this inlet, and we're okay. gonna go to Jaw Point here. Are we that, stopping there? That's where we're gonna stop to see the John John Hopkins Glacier. Oh, so we're not gonna go all the way in. We're not, we can't go all the way in, but we're gonna oh, be right here. Okay. Then we're gonna come back down, and I think they said we're gonna come down and see one of these areas over here, and then come back all the way down to drop the the park ranger back off at the visitor center. This is the Lampoons Glacier, and you can really see the blue there. How beautiful! Oh my gosh. How stunning. This is the John Hopkins Glacier and oh my goodness, it is massive. They told us we can't get close because of the baby seals and the mothers that are all over there. Do you see little heads popping out of the seals? There's a big nursery and mamas and babies. So cool, but I mean, we're still really close. So you definitely wanna check the times of when things are happening when you go to Glacier Bay. Um, we actually almost missed this because I didn't know what was happening. We just hung out on our room and heard scenic commentary with Ranger Billy. And luckily we caught everything, but we did not know that there was information. So again, another way to perfect that Alaska trip is come over to the observation desk on the Norwegian Encore or whatever ship you're on. But Norwegian Encore did a great job of showing today's schedule. So that's called Marble Island. And on there, all those little black dots, they're sea lions. And you can hear them barking. They're going roar, 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 roar. So, and also that island is made out of marble. So we've hit a storm in one of our last nights on the cruise. Finally bad weather. And honestly, it's still really good. Honestly, that was my biggest fear about a cruise ship. Okay, well, you know how it goes in the morning. So we made it through the night in the craziest storm and it wasn't bad at all, even in the front of the ship. Again, the Norwegian Encore and the Bliss uh, cruise ships are specifically made for Alaska. So they're ready for weather and more. And not many ships are made specifically for this cruise. And now we're gonna show you the best things to do in Ketchikan. We decided not to book a tour in Ketchikan because we've already done the Lumberjack Show, which is popular here. We've seen it in Canada. The only thing to do is the Misty Fjords, but with the viewing of the rainy day, it might not go off on a seaplane. You might have to take a boat. And again, those are very expensive excursions and we decided to put everything towards the glacier and the dog sledding. The only other option I would have done is maybe the deadliest catch um, experience. It's not really though experience and it's like $400 which is like the dog sledding. Um, basically just go on their boat, they talk to you about how you crab fish, why it's so deadly, um, you see how the crab is done, you eat some crab. It just didn't seem worth the same cost as the dog sledding to us. Now let us know in the comments, would you have done dog sledding or would you have done the deadliest catch? We're in the historical Ketchikan district and there's Chris over there next to the eagle taking a photo. Everything here is gonna be a lot of Native American history and more, let's go check it out. Of course there are shops and things, but we wanted to go historic Ketchikan, which is actually all Native American. It is Alaska's first city, but also um, a great place on Creek Street to go check out Native American culture here. So as you can tell by the name, it's called Creek Street because everything is along the creek. And so as you walk through the different stores and restaurants and there's museums, it's all along the creek with these houses as you see here. Really cute. This also has that mining town feel as long as you exit the more commercial area. Um, we want again to see things we don't usually see of course in the United States or we can't see in Canada and This is very cute. I like this area. It's very less commercial looking and more I would say authentic than Ketchikan when you first enter where it's all shops. Oh my goodness Dolly's house Everywhere in Alaska we've been a lot of these red lights, that's all we'll say. We met the lovely ladies of Dolly's here and they were telling us that each and every one of these houses was a brothel and that she was the last legal, le madam. legal madam. So she kept this open, very cool. And here is Welcome to Historic Creek Street. So again, you can get an idea if you wanna see different stores. I definitely recommend visiting here before visiting the Main Street kind of commercial 
um, places. You're gonna find a lot more unique products here. A lot of the products you see at all the other places all look the same from port to port, but here we found a lot of different items. So it's also the salmon capital of the world here in Ketchikan. And there's a lot of different museum related things to do, as well as salmon fishing during the salmon months. Definitely worth doing if you are a fishing fan and do an expedition here. And this statue is a cool homage to, again, the different people of Alaska. It's called The Rock. And again, you see the miners, the Native Americans, and more. Very, very cool. Again, if you're not doing anything like doing an excursion in Ketchikan, there's lots of really cool things to see. Another major tip to make your Alaska trip amazing is actually coming to this new mill that just was built in 2023. So literally inside this gift shop, you have a museum, you have amazing Native American art, you have incredible unique shops, a lady playing piano singing, a bar with craft made brews. I mean, it's I'd say this is one of the best ones yet. Again, this is new in 2023. So you probably haven't seen this on any Alaska cruise log yet, but we already bought a lot of stuff here. Actually, this is the first port we actually decided to buy stuff. That's how good the things are here. And as you can tell, it is the size of a giant like outlet. So everything from Northern Lights portraits to incredible Native American art. There's even a clearance section, just like an outlet where you can get some great uh, items for really cheap. The museum here. Again, this is just a tiny corner I'm showing you, but out of all the ports and out of all the gift shops, Again, this is, like I said, the size of an outlet mall. Um, I would say this is worth coming to, even if you're not part of Norwegian. To actually meeting guides and the artists and National Geographic people, as well as incredible homemade art. Honestly, this is the best out of all the gift shops we have found by far. I, I wish I could take these cuties home. Look how cute. Oh my goodness, again, we've never seen these in any port. Um, of course, they have the things that you see everywhere, like the Ulu knives that everybody's excited about, but there was a lot more unique items here, and I don't know if it's because of the space, but also, a lot of the gift shops have the same things from port to port. Here was one of the few places we actually found unique items we've not seen in other stores. No joke, we have been hunting for salmon spread all over salmon. Every port, every place, nobody's had it. Not even restaurants, like a salmon dip. Yes. Finally, in our last day, catch a can, we found it. So we have been searching for seven days for salmon spread, finally finding wild smokes, and we got them all. And there's no preservatives in these because of the way that they're packaged, which is amazing. Again, Chris, it took us seven days. And there's the Norwegian Encore here in Ketchikan. Even on a rainy day, it's still beautiful. So another perk of the Haven is we don't have to wait in the line. I feel very VIP. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I'm just kidding, Sora. Let's catch a can of deadliest catch. This is so Alright, that was fun. That woke me up. Um, again, it's actually, it's not that bad. It's I, We say it's 60 miles per hour. It's because the boat is going. So you're going fast and the wind is like 20. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, but I wanted to say I experienced the front of the boat with all its glory. But again, Norwegian's really safe. If you were in any other part of the boat, you're actually under a cove. You're not getting rained on. Now you see the crazy weather behind me. If you're wondering, hey, does this ship get you sick? I am the most motion prone sickness person. And I was told the front of the ship is the worst idea. Oops. Um, but I was told that this ship was that good that I didn't need to worry. And honestly, I haven't even taken motion sickness stuff. I did the first day out of like fear and then I stopped. Now we have been on the inside passage a lot. Um, I don't know if that helps even with the crazy storms. So um, I would say if you have motion sickness, maybe the first day to be safe. But here, I think the ship's so big, even with bad storms and it going up and down, I've been fine. It's not really going up and down, as you can tell. It's the last day of our cruise and we're on our way to Victoria, Canada. I'm not sad about Canada, just sad it's the end of the cruise. But everything we've seen literally looks like this even right now as we're cruising. It literally looks something like out of a movie, Arendelle or um, you know National Geographic. Uh, Victoria, Canada though, unfortunately we're getting there at night. That is the only drawback to the Seattle route in an Alaska cruise. You usually have to end up 
back in Seattle, which means you have to stop in Victoria, which is usually at night, so you kind of miss seeing it and everything in there other than having some drinks at a restaurant. We definitely succeeded on creating the perfect Alaska trip, except for again that night stop in Victoria. But say you wanna do uh, daytime trips everywhere, you're gonna have to go to Anchorage, Alaska, somewhere in Alaska, and then end up in Vancouver or vice versa. And that's not just with this cruise line, it's with any cruise. So for us, with all of our things, with again, my health issues, having to go and traverse into Anchorage and stopping in multiple flights, or figuring out how to get a rental car when there's hardly any rental cars to then get to the ship is very complicated. But if you're willing to do it, then that is the perfect Alaska trip. So just decide what's easy for you and your family, how adventurous you are, how easy you want things to be. But this was definitely the easiest cruise ever. So we are here in Victoria, and you know we're Disney fans here at LBV TV. This looks a lot like the Canada Pavilion. So you can see that parliament right there, it's the green dome. Next to it, to the left, is something that's really similar in our Epcot Pavilion. It's called the Fairmount. These Fairmount hotels are really famous in Canada. They are the go-to and a lot of dignitaries, uh, of course, royalty have stayed there and they're known to be the best and fanciest hotels in Canada. Things look pretty crazy and chaotic from the uh, cruise next to us trying to disembark. And uh, also there's not a ton to do at Victoria at night other than drink and eat. And trust me, we've had our share of awesome drinking and eating here. We're actually not gonna get off the boat. We're only here from eight to 11. That means we have to be back here at 10. So literally by the time we get off, supposedly it's about 15 minutes into town, 20 minutes, but also with all the people, that easily makes it now probably 40 minutes. So 40 minutes to get to and from, Basically, you only have about 30 minutes to an hour in the town. This is a great tip for your cruise. If you had to pick one day where you don't leave the ship, this is probably it. If you had to pack or do something else or there's something you wanted to do. And that is the city of Victoria at night. It's even lit up like Epcot when they do Canada at the end of the evening, but it's actually really pretty. Um, we did see a horse-drawn carriage drop some people off. That was interesting. Um, yeah, right where the taxis are. So again, it looks like there's things to do, but we stayed in. And it's our last morning. As you can see by the Space Needle behind me, that means we're at port. We really did have the perfect Alaska trip. And this is the ultimate guide for how to plan your Alaska trip. Watch all of our vlogs from this series. Really, it is the ultimate guide to an Alaska trip and how to make it the best of the best. As you can tell, nothing went wrong. Everything was amazing. And wow, again, Magical Vacation Planner who helped us plan this went above and beyond thinking of every detail, every idea. Um, and wow, it definitely made all the difference. Let us know in the comments, where should we go next? Should we go on another cruise? Should we do something like a Disney cruise? Should we go abroad? Let us know. Where do you think we should go in the comments? And let us know what your favorite part was of these adventures. And uh, we answer every comment, so I would love to hear what you thought. Here on our channel, we never say goodbye because when there's adventure and fun and magic, it's never ending. We only say, see you real soon.